What up, guys? Welcome to Dan Terry Marie Mel. You're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Wednesday, November 20th, 2019. Delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mel. That's R A Y M E L O on Twitter at the Enter Report or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. The Broadway musical Cats is reimagined in the latest trailer for Universal's upcoming film adaptation. Taylor Swift, Idris Elba, Judy Dench, James Corden, Jason Derulo, Jennifer Hudson, Sir Ian McKellen, Rebel Wilson, and Royal Ballet Principal Dancer Francesca Haywood appear in the clip released on Tuesday as Walking and Talking Cats. Dench, who portrays old Deturi Naomi, explains to a group of cats that she will be selecting one cat who deserves a new life. The felines then compete for the life-changing opportunity, resulting in multiple song and dance numbers. Dench says, I judge a cat by its soul. Elba, who portrays the villainous McCavity, replies, I've got plenty of soul. Swift appears as Boomer Lorena, who puts on a high-energy performance at a bar. Cats from director Tom Hopper is set to hit theaters on December 20th. Rai Fairchild, Lori Davidson, the dancing duo Les Twins, Myrtle Talley, and Bluey Robinson also star. The film is an adaptation of Andrew Lloyd Webber's Broadway musical of the same name, which is based on author T.S. Eliot's book, Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats. Swift recently released a song from the film titled Beautiful Ghost. Amazon has renewed its Lord of the Rings series ahead of the show's Premiere. The company confirmed Monday on Twitter that it picked up the forthcoming fantasy series for a second season. The post reads, The road goes ever on and on. Hashtag Lot Ron Prime. Quoting The Walking Song, a song Bilbo Baggins sings in The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings books. The Allied says pre production of season one is underway in New Zealand. The series will go on a four to five month hiatus after filming the first two episodes for season one during which the writing team will map out and write the bulk of Season 2 scripts. Completing the Season 2 scripts will allow the Lord of the Rings team to possibly film part of Season 2 during the Season 1 shoot, or film the remainder of Season 1 and 2 back-to-back. The Lord of the Rings series is based on the J.R.R. Tolkien book of the same name, which was previously adapted by Peter Jackson as a trilogy of films. The show is set in Middle-earth and will take place in the Second Age. J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay will serve as showrunners and executive producers with J.A. Bayona to direct the first two episodes. Amazon has yet to announce the official cast, although Will Poulter is reportedly up for the lead role. Celine Dion said on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen that she originally wasn't interested in singing her signature song, My Heart Will Go On, from the Titanic soundtrack. Dion said Monday about why she first rejected the song. It didn't appeal to me. I was probably very tired that day. The singer revisited the track and recorded a demo for it, following advice from her late husband and former manager, Renee Angelia. She continued, I sang the song once and they built the orchestra around it. I never re-sang it for the recording about creating the hit song. Dion says, so the demo is the actual recording, but after that, I sang it about three gazillion times. Dion was asked by a fan on the show about her love life following Angelil's death and if she's still currently dating anyone. The 51-year-old says, I don't date, I don't have a boyfriend, and you know, it, does, it doesn't mean that I will not find someone in my life. If I do that, it would be great. If I don't, that would be great because I'm still in love. She continues, I've been living all my life with Renee. He's still within me. I see him through the eyes of my children every day. Angela died of throat cancer in January 2016 at the age of 73. The couple who, have been, who were married since 1994 shared three children, 18-year-old Renee Charles and 9-year-old twins Nelson and Eddie. Dion recently released her first English-language album in six years titled Courage. Martin Scorsese's The Irishman was turned into a Marvel film on Jimmy Kimmel Live as part of a mashup trailer. The comedic clip was inspired by Scorsese's previous comments that Marvel movies are not cinematic. The filmmaker's name was transformed into the Marvel logo for the trailer, which featured Irishman star Robert De Niro donning a magic ring and becoming an Irish-themed version of Iron Man. De Niro's co-star Al Pacino is also featured as the Hulk. 
Scorsese was on hand to discuss with Kimmel the filming of The Irishman and how he, he utilized CGI effects to de-age his actors. The Irishman takes place over decades, causing its characters to age through the film. He says, we were doing the eufication, uh, and it was an experiment. It was an experiment, the whole thing. He also said, there was a certain point after we finished the script that we could have probably had them play younger. But I waited too long. By the time we got around together, they were too old to play young. The Irishman, which also stars Joe Pesci and Ray Romano, is coming to Netflix on November 27th. Tom Hanks said on today, Tuesday, that he originally passed on portraying Mr. Rogers in A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood until he was convinced to take on the role by director Mariel Heller. Uh, Hanks told today Savannah Guthrie, she told me that she was not interested in any kind of editorial comment on who Mr. Rogers was, nor did she want an imitation of Mr. Rogers' physicality or presentation. The yeah, actor continued about Heller. She said, essentially, you will get a wig and we'll do something with your eyebrows and all the rest is going to be up to you. Hanks also discussed how the late Mr. Rogers connected with children through his beloved series, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. He says, it is not for us. It's not for grown-ups who knows how the world works. It's for children who are looking to be invested in by somebody who cares about them. The 63-year-old uh, said that he spoke with Rogers' widow, Joanne Rogers, who explained what her husband might have done today amid a divisive world. Hanks said of what Joanne Rogers mentioned, he would just be the best person he could. Just be good. A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood is set to hit theaters on Friday. Mad About Your stars Helen Hunt and Paul Reiser are sharing details about the show's upcoming, upcoming reunion. The 56-year-old actress and 63-year-old actress said on Tuesday's episode of the Ellen DeGeneres show that starting work on the revival was a psychedelic experience. Hunt and Reiser played married couple Jamie James Butchman and Paul Butchman on Mad About You, which originally had a seven-season run on NBC from 1992 to 1999. The show will return as a limited series revival on Spectrum Originals. Hunt says, I think the thing that made us say yes is that someone did the math and our daughter would be leaving home right now, referencing her and Riser's on-screen daughter, Mabel. We thought we could write 12 shows about that. Paul just went through emptiness. I'm about to go through it. So we knew there'd be 12 stories in there somehow. Riser added, it also kind of felt like it was really parallel to what we did the original time. The kickoff of, to that show was just, we just got married, and now you realize there's two knuckleheads, just two in a room. We realize once the kid leaves, we're back to that, except we're older. Hunt says, it was initially mind-blowing to be back on the Mad About You set. Uh, she said, the day that we got everybody together to do a table read was pretty psychedelic. It was like time travel. When we started rehearsing, the weird thing became how not weird it felt. Hunt, Riser, and DeGeneres recall how DeGeneres guest starred as a caterer turned nanny, Nancy Bloom, in the season six finale. The generous said, I don't remember it still, even looking at it, saying after playing a clip of her appearance. Hunt and Riser started work on Mad About You revival in October, uh, following Hunt's car crash and hospitalization. Mad About You revival premieres Wednesday on Spectrum Originals. Abby Quinn will play Mabel in the revival. Netflix is giving a glimpse of RuPaul in the new series AJ and the Queen. The streaming service released a teaser trailer Tuesday on Twitter featuring RuPaul as Ruby Red, a drag queen traveling from club to club across the U.S. with AJ, played by Izzy Gasparis, a scrappy 11-year-old orphan. The sneak peek shows RuPaul taking the stage as Ruby Red in a number of fiery looks and a white and silver ensemble. The caption reads, RuPaul stars as Ruby Red in Hashtag AJ and the Queen, a new scripted comedy series premiering January 10th. AJ and the Queen is created by RuPaul and Sex and the City writer and producer Michael Patrick King. The show co-stars Michael Leon Woolley, John Segarra, Tia Carrere, and Katerina Tannenbaum. RuPaul said in an interview um, with Interview Magazine in August that filming AJ and the Queen was an emotional experience. The star shared my character's parents, an 11-year-old child, so... I was able to really uh, emotionally revisit myself as a kid. It was a trip. I've never done anything like that before. It was the most challenging thing for me as an actor and human. He says, the, the big thing for me is that I wish I'd learned how to process feelings earlier. 
The human body is kind of like a computer program and a lot of feelings that I felt were based on the experiences I had. Knowing that feelings are not facts was a message I wish that 11-year-old Rue had heard. RuPaul is known for hosting the VH1 reality competition RuPaul Drag Race. The new spinoff RuPaul's Celebrity Drag Race will premiere on VH1 in 2020. Frozen stars Adina Menzel and Kristen Bell receive stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame simultaneously on Tuesday. The sequel Fro Frozen 2 opens on Friday. Each recipient of the star had two speakers introduce them at the unveiling at the corner of Hollywood Boulevard and Argyle Avenue near the Pantages Theater, where Menzel has performed on stage. Actor Jackie Thone and The Good Place creator Michael Schur introduced Bell. Disney co-chairman Alan Horn and Frozen co-star Josh Gad introduced Menzel. Bell recalled meaningful moments of her life, like singing an aria to her father as a child, learning the first twist in The Good Place Season 1, being cast by her husband Dax Shepard in a movie based on their love story, and her mother dropping her off at auditions. Bell concluded this star was really only true, its true value, when inevitably someone is mugged in that very spot. As they clutch their purse, the assailant screams, let it go, and the victim will look up and say, that's not even her song. Only then will I know I've truly made it. Let It Go is Elsa's signature song in Frozen. Belle plays Anna, Elsa's sister. Menzel lamented that her father was injured and could not make it to Hollywood from Florida, and her sister also could not be present. She thanked her mother in the audience for not allowing her to have a fallback career and credits her 10-year-old soul, Walker, for inspiring her and her husband, Aaron Lord, in the, addition, in the audience for giving her a sense of peace. Menzel says in the words of Jonathan Larson, who is the composer of Rent and the very first job that I ever had in my life. I'm humbled and honored to be here. I'm going to try to take in the moment, as he says, savor this moment because there's no day but today. Henry Cavill says he was called chubby during his audition to play James Bond. The 36-year-old British actor recalled losing the role to Daniel Craig in a new issue of Men's Health magazine. Cavill auditioned to play Bond uh, before Craig landed the role in 2005. During a screen test, Cowell walked out of a bathroom while wrapped in a towel and reenacted the scene from one of Sean Connery's Bond films. Cowell says, I probably could have been prepared better. I remember the director, Martin Campbell, saying, looking a little chubby there, Henry. He added, I didn't know how to train or diet. And I'm glad Martin said something because I responded well to the truth. It helps me get better. Cowell went on to star on the Showtime series, The Tudors, and the 2011 film Immortals. He had heard to a strict diet and training regimen for the Immortals, which could start a new dedication to fitness. Cavill's training and testified once he landed the role of Clark Kent, a.k.a. Superman, in the 2013 film Man of Steel. He remains dedicated to fitness to this day. Uh, he says, I know what it's like to go out from out of shape, and afterwards I look at myself like, man, well done. It's not like I'm a golden guy. I'm just proud of what I've achieved. Cavill says he was unpopular in school and was called Fat Cavill by his classmates. He says, I was a chubby kid. I could very well have gone down the route of just accepting my lot in life and being like, I guess I'm not going to do anything. Cavill has played Superman in three DC movies and says he has a lot to give for Superman yet. He will also star as Geralt of Rivia in the Netflix series adaptation, The Witcher, which premieres on December 20th. Rosie O'Donnell says she's hoping for the best when it comes to her future with her fiancé. The 57-year-old television personality addressed reports that she and Elizabeth Rooney have uh, ended their engagement in an interview Monday with Extra. O'Donnell was attending an event for her nonprofit Rosie's Theater Kids when she gave the update of her relationship status. O'Donnell says, we're still figuring things out. It's hard in the public life. It's hard for a person who is a normal person in a normal job. I'm kind of used to it. She added, we're trying to figure it out. I am a hopeful person, and I am hoping for the best. O'Donnell well, shared similar sentiments in an interview with Us Weekly on the red carpet. She says, we're trying to work out what's going on. Rooney's a police officer, and she's young, and there's a lot of attention on us. We just take it slow. O'Donnell well, attended the event with her children, Blake Christopher, 19, and Vivian Rose, 16, in Ro Rooney's absence. She has also parents to Parker uh, Jareen, uh, 24, Chelsea Bell, 22, and Dakota, 6. 
Radar Online said in October that O'Donnell and Rooney had called it quits. O'Donnell had announced her engagement uh, to Rooney, a mounted police officer and Army veteran who was 23 years her junior in October 2018. O'Donnell was previously married to Kelly Carpenter and Michelle Rounds. Rounds died of an apparent suicide in September 2017. Kevin Hart will release a real and raw new Netflix docuseries in December. The 40-year-old actor and comedian said in Instagram video Tuesday that his docuseries, Don't Fuck This Up, will premiere on the streaming service December 27th. The docuseries consists of six episodes and follows Hart in his day-to-day -day life. The show charts the ups and downs of Hart's recent personal and professional life, including his Oscar controversy. Hart stepped down as an Oscar host in December 2018 after his past homophobic tweets resurfaced online. The posts dated back to 2011 have since been deleted. Hart says in the video, I'm releasing a documentary with Netflix. It's a look into my life over the last year and a half, which has been a hell of a roller coasters, peaks, hills, valleys, ups and downs. It's as real and raw and as transparent as you can be. And sometimes, or something, I think people need to see. Get it? Always looking for ways to improve and progress, and this documentary was one of the ways I felt I could do that. The docuseries also features interviews with Hart's friends and families, archival footage from his childhood and early days in stand-up comedy. Hart previously released a stand-up comedy special with Netflix, Irresponsible, in April. In addition to the docuseries, Hart will star in Jumanji, The Next Level, which opens in theaters December 13th. The film will screen in selected theaters alongside the Game Awards awards on December 12th. Hart was injured in a car crash in September. Hart's friend, producer Jerry Black, was driving the car with his fiancée Rebecca Broxman and Hart as a passenger. Authorities attribute the crash to reckless driving in October. Post Malone announced on Tuesday that he will be extending his runaway tour with the second North American leg in 2020. The rapper and singer will be hitting the road again starting in February after he wraps up the first portion of his tour on Wednesday at the Forum in Los Angeles. Malone will be joined by special guests Swali and Tyler Yahi. Tickets go on sale for the general public on Friday at 9 a.m. local time through Live Nation. The runway tour, first launched in September, is in support of Malone's third studio album titled Hollywood's Bleeding. The album recently reached number one on the U.S. album charts again for a fifth consecutive non-week. Metallica and Disturb will headline the 2020 Epic Center Festival. Organizers announced a full lineup Tuesday on Twitter for the annual musical event, which takes place May 1st to the 3rd at the Charlotte Motor Speedway in Charlotte, North Carolina. Metallica will perform two headlining sets, one on May 1st and one on May 3rd. Disturb will headline the festival May 2nd. Um, the post reads, Epic Center 2020 full lineup reveal featuring two nights of at Metallica. Metallica confirmed the news in a tweet Tuesday. The band wrote, we're headlining at Epic Center Fest in Charlotte, North Carolina, with two different sets on Friday, May 1st, and Sunday, May 3rd. Godsmack, Papa Roach, David Lee Roth, Royal Blood, I Prevail, and others will perform on May 1st, while Laird Skinner, Stain, Chevelle, uh, Cypress Hill, Anthrax, Alterbridge will perform May 2nd, and the Deftones, Volbeat, uh, Gojira, Rancid, and Dropkick Murphys will perform May 3rd. Tickets are on sale now with passages ranging from $99.50 for a single day to admissions $499.50 for a third VIP pass. Metallica last released the album Hardwired to Self Destruct in 2016. The band canceled its Austrian, uh, its Australian tour in September as frontman James Hetfield sought treatment in rehab. The star released its seventh studio album entitled Evolution in October 2018. The album includes the singles Are You Ready, A Reason to Fight, and No More. The Doobie Brothers announced a 50th anniversary tour that will begin in June 2020. The tour will feature for the first time in nearly 25 years the lineup of Michael McDonald, Tom Johnston, Pat Simmons, and John McPhee. The band will perform a wide range of their hit songs, including Take It to the Streets, Listen to the Music, Long Train Running, Black Water, What a Fool Believes, China Grove, Minute by Minute, It Keeps You Running, and Jesus is All Right with Me, and more. Uh, Johnson said in the statement, we truly are excited about our 50th anniversary 
on tour. It's also a celebration of the band's entire history. And we'll be performing songs from uh, our own full catalog, as well as new music, Johnson said in a statement. Tickets go on sale for the general public at on December 6th at 10 p.m. local time through Live Nation. The Doobie Brothers were nominated in October for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Class of 2020. More than 1,000 artists, historians, journalists, and music industry professionals will vote on which nominees will be not indicted. A fan vote will also be tallied as well. And that's your entertainment report for Wednesday, November 20th, 2019. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at the enter report or on Instagram at the entertainment report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of the entertainment report Anytime you want on iHeartRadio, just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app. Search for the Entertainment Report and it'll take you to the page. Good night and God bless you all.